Mostly what we're going to be working on is understanding preflop theory. Um, it's going to be incredibly difficult to look up, uh, difficult and inefficient to look up preflop ranges all the time uh, while you're playing. Well, first of all, it's against TOS now to do that while you're playing, I think, uh, or I'm not even really sure anymore, but looking at preflop charts all the time uh, and trying to study by memorizing the grids is very difficult. So I think a, a much better way to do it um, is to get a deeper understanding of why we're, th you know, why we're three betting from what positions, uh, what sizes, what type of hands, uh, more like a general base uh, understanding of, what, you know, why are we three betting, uh, what's the point, and how we're balancing value and bluffs and, and, and general structural uh, understanding of, of three betting. So. We're going to work on that and then a little bit of post flop i'll give you guys some really nice shortcuts for post flop uh, that make a lot of money so all right so i took a bunch of notes i've spent like 10 hours today uh looking at all of these uh pre-flop spots for three betting and i took a bunch of notes to sum everything up so you guys can get a quick understanding of what's going on so for in position three bets this is when you know, under the gun or middle position opens, and um, we are in position to that player. Um, I took notes on different stack sizes. We have 100 big blinds, we have 60 big blinds, and 30 big blinds. The sizing that we're going to be using most of the time for 100 big blinds is 3.5x, and as the stack size gets smaller, we're going with smaller sizings. Um, some guys even are using 2.6x, uh, but these are the study. These are the sizings that I've been studying. So we're just going to look at what do we do? Uh, what 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 our range? What does our range look like with these sizings? So at 100 big blinds, when we 3.5x in position with three bet, we're using roughly 45% value, 55% bluffs from all positions uh, versus UTG open. The EP early position three bets are linear. And the LP three bets are polar. So what does this mean? So if we are, if under the gun opens and we are in the under the gun, we are under the gun one, our three bets um, will be the top X percentage of range. There's no split. We don't, uh, the bluffs that we're using are just hands that are slightly worse than our value hands. So a hand like ace queen off or ace queen suited would be considered a bluff here and you're not through betting a lot. Now, why are we using this linear sizing? It's not a uh, plus EV for this player, this under the gun one player, it's be flatting a lot. And that is because there are so many players left to act that uh, you know hands like ace queen suited uh, are going to lose value when flatted, when we play them as a flat because other players can come in uh, behind for a very cheap price and uh, at the top of our value range is not playing well multi-way. So this type of range, when, when an EP range opens and we three bet, uh, our, the top 10% of our hands just really like to three bet, uh, and then we're folding everything else. And then if we look at the three bets from late position, it's polar. So we're three betting the best hands, and then we're also three betting uh, some bluffs that are significantly worse than our flatting range. And this is because uh, flats can be so profitable for a late position player versus an early position raiser. Hands like Jack-10 suited on the button, hands like King-Queen off on the button, 6-7 suited on the button. All of these hands are printing uh, by, by just calling. So they those types of hands want to do that. And then we also want to have um, three bet bluffs. You know, generally what you're going to see here is that uh, when you're three betting, you're almost always going to have half value, half bluffs, and um, you know that type of balance is very difficult to play against and maximizes the EV for the three better. So 60 big blinds, uh, we're going to be sizing down, 3x sizing. We're still going to keep maintain the same ratio of value to bluffs, roughly 50-50. Um, EP three bets once again are linear. And we're going to we're going to look at examples of all these, uh, and then LP three bets are polar bluffs are pulled from ace x suited, king x suited, off suit high cards with nice 
uh, removal. And then keep in mind that when we're three betting off of like a 60 big line stack or a 30 big line stack, the SPR stack to pot ratio post flop is going to be uh, very small, meaning um, that you don't, our bluffs don't need to be making flushes, um, you know, and straights a lot. Simply having high cards in these types of pots uh, will be sufficient. A hand like King Queen off uh, plays really nicely as a three bet with short SPR. Usually a king or a queen uh, will will be good. Uh, you know that that's things change a lot when you play 200 big blind poker. You your your bluffs are uh, hands that can make uh, like massive hands rather than just pairs. So in position 30 big blinds, 3x sizing again, we are doing less bluffing. As the stack size decreases, we can't bluff as much. Uh, that opens the doors to just getting four bet shoved on a lot. So we just have to have more value. And you see this in, you know, this is a post flop poker theory as well. Um, when you're when you play deeper stacks, you get to have more bluffs on early streets, and that's because of the amount of pressure you get to leverage against your opponents over all uh, four streets of play. Um, when you're short, you just don't have that much leverage, and you need more value uh, in your re-raising range. EP three bets are polar uh, bluffs pulled from high cards. LP three bets are polar bluffs pulled from high cards. Three betting from the small blind. Okay, sizing you're going to notice is significantly larger. We are going 4.5x off of 100 bigs, 3.5x off of 60 and below. The strategy is much different as, as well, as you guys know. Uh, we're using linear ranges, meaning that we just three bet our best hands, and then we're calling a section uh, below our best hands. Versus under the gun, we're only three betting 6%, calling 11. And I was looking at this today. This is, uh, it's quite a wide calling range here. Even hands like pocket twos and jack nine suited are even be pipped from the small blind. Uh, versus middle position, we're three betting the top 8% of hands, calling 11. Versus late position, three betting 18%, calling 10. Now notice how much this three bet jumps up from 6 to 18. Uh, based on what position you're in. I would say that the pool pools are under three betting overall, but especially in late position, I don't think uh, anyone at the mid stakes, low stakes level is hitting this 18% uh, three bet, you know, and it's a 10% BPIP. So this is a 28, the, you know, a small blind is supposed to be BPIPing 28% versus an LP open. You just never see that happening. Um, you know, this is a huge difference. 18% is very aggressive. And then if you have, you know, if you have a pool that's having a hard time calling three bets enough, this 18 can be kicked up a bit as well. So 60, um, so we're using the 3.5x sizing now versus under the gun, 7% calling 12. Three betting versus MP, MP is nine. Three betting versus LP is 17 calling 15. So the shorter stack size here gets to be pip more than the deeper stack size. Uh, you're going to be seeing that a lot. 32% VPIP versus a 60 big blind open and 28 versus a small, uh, I'm sorry, versus a 100 big, 100 big blind stack. So 30 big blinds, we're still using 3.5x. Uh, and this is the stack size where we really can't be three bet bluffing a lot because the opponent can just four bet shove a lot in our face. So we, this has to be kind of a value, more value oriented uh, range. Top 6%, top 6% and top 20% calling 12, 12, and seven. All right, three betting from the big blind. Big blind three bets. So we're using slightly larger sizing now from the big blind 4.5, 4, and 3.5. Very, very tight versus under the gun. 
and we're using a ratio of a 50% value, 50% bluffs. So we are going polar. The small blind was played as a linear three bet. The big blind is played as a polar uh, three bet. And why do you ask? Well, the big blind can call a bunch of hands profitably. There's no one left to act behind. Um, so it just plays much differently than small blind. So we're bluffing a lot, value betting a lot, 5% total three bet versus under the gun. So we're not three betting almost ever versus under the gun and then versus late position that gets brought up to 16. And the bluffs are pulled from suited connectors and then just some random nice hands with blockers, ace X, uh, king X, and um, just kind of like a sporadic amount of different combos. Uh, I don't think it matters too much what you have, uh, what combos you're using, as long as your your three bet is at least 16% from the big line versus LP. I think that's going to be more important. And also just V pipping a lot in general. 60% uh, V pip versus a button open. I don't think population uh, could ever hit that. So I'm sorry, this is 60% 6, call, so it's going to be a 76% V pip. Uh, versus a button, a button open off of 100 bigs. And you see this actually increase as the stack sizes get shorter. And that's because reverse implied odds are much less significant. You know, if you hit a low pair, uh, it's just worth a lot more when you're shallower stacked than when you're deeper stacked. So you see the VPIP climb here, it's uh, 79 and here it's 82. So it goes from 76 to 82. Uh, let's see, 60 big blinds. We're using a 4X sizing from the big blind. Um, three betting 6%, very, very tight versus under the gun. Half value, half bluffs. Calling 47% of hands. And then versus late position, we have three betting. 16% of hands, half value, half bluffs, calling 63. So very tight strategy versus uh, under the gun and middle position opens. And pretty aggressive versus button opens. 3.5x sizing off of the 30 big blind stack. Three betting 6%. You notice here the value to bluff ratio is, is constant. And it's, it was almost exactly constant in the other three betting uh, grids as well. So when you when you play 200 big blind poker with uh, with no ante, you actually get it, it becomes like 67% bluffs and 33% value. Um, and then as your stack size decreases, it becomes more balanced like this. It's just kind of like the post swap theory that we always discuss. So versus under the gun, tight. MP tight versus the button, very uh, aggressive three bet, 19% calling, 63%. So we're only folding 18% of hands uh, off of 30 bigs once a button opens. Pretty wild. Okay, so now we just went over our three betting strategy. We didn't go over specific hand combinations. Uh, I'll show you guys, you know, the grids and go through them very quickly, but you guys have a general idea of what the frequencies look like. Let me just make sure everyone's hearing me okay. All right. Yeah, they're good. Get this video up. Um, so facing, so we're going to look at facing three bets now, how to handle these three bets. What are we going to be doing? So when we open hijack plus one, I just use this as a base. Um, we open hijack plus one, we face a hijack three bet, and we face a button three bet. How are our strategies going to look? So we're going to four bet 19% of the time, of which we're mostly gonna have value sometimes bluffing. So we're hitting them, we're gonna be four betting about one fifth. One fifth of the time we get three bet, we're gonna be four betting. We're going to be three, uh, four betting mostly value, and we're four betting to a 2.8x sizing. So we're getting smaller with our sizing. Why? That's because the SPR is decreasing. Uh, yeah, 
So we're using a 2.8x format sizing. We're mostly going to have, and sometimes not, our bluffs are going to be like ASEC suited, ace deuce through a7 suited, uh, mostly just hands with blocker quality and hands that can suck out and play, you know, that will have good equity in a short SPR pot. Calling 39 and folding 42. So we are V pipping versus a three bet the majority of the time here. 58% of the time we're doing something. Uh, I would say the pool probably folds um, close to GTO. They probably over call after they raise from early position and then over fold uh, when they raise from late position. It's just harder to play wider ranges, you know, and know that if you raise the cutoff and get three bet, uh, you know, hands like king eight suited our peels. That's, that's a tough one, tough one to get. So um, versus a button three bet, after we open hijack one, we get three bet from the button. And keep in mind the button is going to be uh, three betting 3x or 3.5x off of 100 bigs. Our four bet is going to be 18%, so roughly the same. One in five times we're going to be four betting. 66% value, 33% bluffs. We're going to go over the exact like value threshold, like are we for betting jacks plus or queens plus here? So, you know, we're going to look at that. And then 33% bluffs. So we're rebluffing him. Same exact ratio. Uh, also, we're bluffing less because we're out of position. Generally, that's just kind of what you're seeing is we, we're bluffing less when we're out of position. Calling 47, only folding 35. Uh, so we're defending 65% of the time. Uh, out of position. Uh, 60 big blinds, same exact thing, shorter stack now. So we're going to be four betting. We're using a, a smaller sizing for one, 2.5x. Uh, we're going to be four betting 18, almost exact same four bet frequencies, almost the exact same value to bluff frequencies but we're folding much less. So we're folding 28 and 21. And this is uh, kind of the same theory that we saw when we're defending the big blind, when we're short stacked and we, we defend the big blind, we can do so with a very wide range. Um, and then when we're deeper stacked, we defend the big blind with a tighter range. We're seeing that same type of idea here. And then it drops, you know, it drops again when we raise off of 30 big blinds folding only 25% to three bets, which is wild. Yeah, I don't think you see this happening much. Um, and then also the you know, 30 big blind, we open from hijack one, get three bet. Sizing for the four bet is all in only, there's nothing else. We're three betting more linear, and that's just because we are going all in as opposed to uh, you know race folding parts of our range. Calling 50%, folding 25%, so just a ton of VPP. Uh, all right. Facing a three bet after opening. Uh, this is from the small blind. So different stack sizes, the four bet sizing for this 100 big blind. You know, we, we're going to be opening from either under the gun MP or LP. We get three bet from the small blind. The four bet sizing is very, very small. This is a fact, a uh, couple of reasons. We are in position, so uh, we have an advantage post flop. That's why we're sizing down. And then also SPR is becoming uh, shorter. So very, very tiny uh, four bet size here. Once we get three bet from the small blind after we raise under the gun, we're four betting very infrequently here. All of these are infrequent under the gun MPLP. Very infrequent, 10 or below here. When we do four bet, it's mostly value and some bluffs. When we play cash games, 200 big blinds, you'll see this uh, shift dramatically. But off of 100 big blinds, we just don't get to bluff that much. We mostly have to have value and we're just not four betting that much. Now this says 10% that that does not mean 10% of starting hands. That means 10% of the range that you opened. So if we if you opened 18% from under the gun, 10% of that range would be 1.8% of hands, which is you know something like aces and kings, or maybe kings and queens and some ace king and then some bluff. And you know ace king is even considered 
uh, semi bluff with this stacked up. Calling 47, folding 43. Uh, folding increases a little bit once you raise from LP. Uh, it's a decent amount of folding here. Uh, um, let's see what else. Let's jump to 60 big blinds. So when we're at 60 big blinds, we are four betting much less. We're going to be playing our hands as a lot of traps. I think at this stack depth, aces is going to be played as a pure call. Um, this, why do we four bet so infrequently? It helps out our overall range at this specific stack depth to have strength in our calling range. When we call, when we just call hands like aces, kings, queens, jacks, ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, king, queen suited, um, the the small blind can't just barrel off as much as he would. Uh, be able to if our range was very, very capped. So the calculator just tells us the best strategy is actually to leave a lot of strength in our calling range. So um, very infrequent four bets, calling the majority of the time and look at how low these folding frequencies are. So at this specific sack depth, um, with the SPR the way it is and the range is, you know, the way we have a RFI set up, uh, this is a very nice just call. And I have notes on what hands we're using here. So only ace king and king king are four bet all in here. At this stack depth, everything else is called. Uh, from MP, only queen queen, king king, and ace king are four bet all in. Everything is, uh, every other value hand is, is, uh, is just called. And then from LP, only ace king, jack jack through nine nine and 12 bluffs. So we're doing, basically to sum it up, we're doing a lot of just peeling in position. Uh, we're playing very well against the small blind. It's very hard to play out of position. That's why small blind is sizing up. It's a disadvantage to be playing out of position and we can um, you know, push our EV the highest by just flatting, by just flatting heaps. Now, this is a solver answer, you know, that we wanna be slow playing all these types of hands. Uh, I think in reality, you probably want to four bet aces and queens and jacks at a very high frequency because I think it's hard for a lot of the low stake, mid stakes opponents to just be uh, bomb, bomb, bombing off um, when they're already starting with such a tight range preflop. I think they're just going to not find all of the bluffs that they should. You know, I think that they're going to just try to get to showdown with nines a lot when they should be bluffing or ace king a lot when they should be bluffing. Um, so I think it's probably better to just fast play the top of your range as an exploit. Um, but this is what the solver says. Uh, off of 30 big blinds, now we're starting to really four bet heaps uh, in position. Uh, short SPR, we're not calling uh, very frequently at all and we're folding way more. All right, facing big blind three bets. So three stack sizes, same setup here. We're raising from under the gun middle position or late position, and we're facing a three bet from the big blind. Um, when we get three bet from the big blind, we're using a 2.3x four bet sizing, very small. It's because we're in position and SPR is small. And then for 60 big blinds, 30 big blinds, we're just only using four bet all in, uh, if anything. All right, so we're not four betting a lot at all on 100 big blinds or 60 big blinds. When we do, it's mostly value. We are calling quite a bit and we're folding about half the time. Um, 60 big blinds, for betting very infrequently, calling a lot. We saw this in, you know, versus the small blind as well. The imposition player just gets to show a lot of EV by calling preflop, um, and then only folding, only folding a small amount of time. So uh, we're going to be V pipping a lot versus three bets. I think, especially in late position, it's going to be very hard for people to fold less than this. You know, if, if the population's opening the button 50% of hands and they get three bet, I think 
probably going to see folding frequencies higher than this 42, uh, you know, which should also affect your post flop ranges. If if someone never ever calls three bets, then you probably don't want to be bluffing them as much post flop, and you should shift your strategies away from GTO. 30 big blinds, um, four betting, 50%, yeah. And we're stuffing it a decent amount, calling, calling a lot and folding about half the time. Okay, so the key takeaways from all of these notes, um, the big picture ideas here is larger three bet sizing um, is preferred when we're deeper stacked. We saw sizing go from uh, 3.5 to 3. If you're playing 200 big blinds, you're three betting to 4x. Larger three bet sizing went out of position, and that is to deny the in position player equity by just peeling, which we saw uh, people can do very wide. Linear three bet structure with many players left to act. So that means if under the gun is opening, um, we have a much different three bet strategy if we are under the gun one. Uh, than if we were button, and that is because of how many players are left to act. When you're under the gun one with a hand like ace queen suited, you just want to get the pot heads up. You want to three bet small and hopefully play the pot heads up. Um, when you're on the button, you can be flatting tons of hands because you're most likely going to be playing heads up or three way, uh, so you don't have to worry about getting the players behind you um, to fold with, you know, bad hands that are profitable peels. Um, yep, polar, and, you know, in uh, in the same direction, polar through best structure with uh, fewer few players left to act. If the cutoff opens, we can play a ton of hands on the button as a flat, ton, like heaps of hands. You can beep it by 15 or 20. Um, so we want to be able to flat a lot and then therefore we can three bet with uh three bet with worse hands hands like king 10 off ace two suited uh, king eight suited more bluffing when we're deeper stacked um you know this is general poker theory the more pressure you can put someone on later streets the higher your betting volume can be on later streets the higher your betting volume should be on early streets to leverage uh, leverage that fact. Four bet sizing is much smaller um, when SPR is should be that should be SPR. Uh, SPR is short. More four betting when out of position versus I, uh, uh, versus IP. So you see a, a very aggressive. We saw a four betting of like 25% um, when we open MP and LP three bets us, and that's just because it's much more difficult to play out of uh, position than in position is much harder to realize equity. Uh, you're always going to be, uh, you know, acting, basically giving the other person the betting lead, not closing action. Uh, it's just because it becomes more advantageous to four bet heaps um, and take chips down preflop. Roughly one to one ratio of value to bluffs. We saw that almost Everywhere when three betting, you almost always want to have a one to one ratio of value to bluffs, unless you're going to be all in. Um, you know, unless you're short stacked and you're going to be all in, in which case you play more of a linear range, you know, or maybe like 70% value, 30% bluffs. But anything above six, 60 big blinds or above, you want roughly one to one ratio of value to bluffs. All right. So let's look through my range converter. So we're just gonna look at my range. The, all of the ranges that I have on this website uh, are from Monker. The guy who makes it charges a ton. I think I played, paid like three or 4K for all of my pre-flop ranges, but he updates them. Uh, I don't think that you guys need these. I wouldn't recommend buying these. Um, I think that the ones on pokercoaching.com are sufficient. Um, but, you know, I got these like two years ago and the guy's been updating them forever, which is, you know, really nice. But they're also very, very, very accurate and the user interface is good. 
Um, so let's explore some ranges here. So let's say under the gun folds, and, and these I think these are like the most accurate ranges you're going to get on the market. Not that you really need them at mid stakes, but just so you guys know. All right. So we should see a linear three betting strategy. We talked about this. By the way, this is um, 100 big blinds. Linear three betting strategy. Uh, almost only three bets, not a lot of flats. And all of the three bets are coming from the top, let's see, the top 8% of hands. Okay. So let's see how that shifts. Uh, only So it's VPIP of 10 here. Hijack, you start to see the range become more a little bit more polar. We have some worse hands being uh, added to the three bet, but we also have more flatting. So the benefits of becoming more polar with your bluffs is that you can now start flatting some of these hands um, that we played as three bets before. We're using a, let's see, 3.5 X sizing here. And, you know, the value threshold pretty much like nines, you could just make this like purely nines plus once the three bet for value and then ace queen plus once the three bet for value. And you could, you know, just play a simpler strategy where you, you just play nines 100% three bet, ace queen 100% three bet, and then flat ace jack suited 100% of the time. Um, if you look at the EVs of like all the different actions of like three betting or calling here, it's negligible and and, and it doesn't, doesn't matter at all um, if you're just looking at one hand. Uh, so if you're up against, you know, a very, very soft opponent, maybe you just want to purely three bet and try to get the pot heads up with him. Um, maybe you're up against Adrian Mateos and you have King 10 suited and you just decide to fold or King 9 suited and just decide to fold because, uh, you know, your EV isn't that good against him. Or maybe you just played the past three pots in a row and you have Jack 10 suited and you just decide to fold it because you know that if you with the flop, you're pretty much never going to be getting folds post flop because uh, they think you're a maniac. So you don't have an, you know, you don't have much fold equity post flop. So you're just folding Jack 10 soon. Or maybe you haven't played a hand in three hours and you have Jack nine suited and you decide to three bet. So, you know, playing poker, executing correct poker play is, you know, there's a dance to it. Uh, and as long as you're around, somewhat around these preflop ranges, you're going to be, uh, you know, it's it's okay to make deviations, especially preflop where the values aren't worth as much. Um, you know, folding versus flatting versus three betting a lot of these hands is not going to make you uh, a ton of money. So anyway, let's keep looking at GTO ranges. So cut off. So now we're seeing the ranges become more polar here. Lots of flatting. Uh, hand Deuces, 5-4 suited, getting very, very wide here with flats. And it's becoming even more polar when we get to the button. Loads, 6-4 suited is a V-pip. 8-6 suited is a V-pip. King-5 suited is a V-pip. Um, all right. And then the small blind, three betting range is linear, as we saw. Quite a lot of V-pipping. As I mentioned in the... Uh, when we went over this, deuces here is even a call. Jack eight suited is a V pip here, so you're V pipping quite wide. Um, always make sure that you're playing in flow. Poker is a game of flow. If you know, if you if you're been very aggressive, you should tighten up, and if you're been very tight, you should you should be more active. Um, you don't have to, you know, you don't. You could use all of these grids to find creative ways to play with the people who you want to play with at the speed you want to play with, um, put pressure on on the right people. All right, enough of that. Big line, three betting, very uh, not very much three betting at all, 6%. Half of this is going to be bluffs, so we're three betting. You know, this top value region makes about 3% of hands. Ace is three queens and ace king. That's, you know, it's some ace queen suited. That's going to be about 3% of hands. And then all this red down here is going to be about 3% of hands, 50-50. Okay. Um, let's look at some 60 big blind. We'll look at, this time we'll look at a middle position open. Mm -hmm. 
So we are shorter stacked now, and we're opening from later position. Hijack, we're seeing the same principles. We're three betting to a smaller amount. Polarized strategy, a lot of V pipping. I guarantee you that everyone here is not calling Queen nine suited, Jack nine suited as much as they should be, three betting 10 eight suited as much as they should be. I would say generally the population is under three betting and under V pipping uh, pre flop. It's really just incredible how many hands that you can play. Uh, and then we'll just look at a three bet here to see our response as an MP player. So the three bet is going to be three X. These two players fold. And this is MP's response. So we have about an 18% four bet. When we do four bet, we are going mostly 2.3x. So we're four betting about one in five times that we get three bet. Our four bets are going to come from Queens Plus and then just kind of a mixture of different hand combos with blocker values. Like I keep saying, you know, it's not important that you are three betting ace or four betting ace two suited at this frequency. Um, but, you know, these are the types of hands that you want to be rebluffing with from time to time. And then we'll go over a 30 big blind. Uh, 30 big blind stack. Do a hijack open. All right, so hijack is going to be opening pretty wide here, 28%. And there's not many players left to act, so you can see a very, very aggressive strategy from the players behind. Cut off um, V pipping 16% of hands here. This is the stack size where cutoff cannot be through by bluffing a lot because the hijack can just uh, slam tons of hands if he does that. So this is where you see him have mostly value, uh, like 70% value, 66 or 70% value, 30% bluffs. Um, as you can see here, nines is like the bottom of his value range here for three bet, getting it in, ace queen. So a ton of value in the three betting range and then uh, you know only some bluffs here and a decent amount of flats. Button, V-pipping, 22% here. Mostly value with the three bet again. And just using a selection of these uh, combos at the bottom of the calling range to three bet. The small blind, I think we'll play so the small blind is just going all in about half of the time that it three bets and three betting small about half the time. So three betting about 12% here, uh, slamming the hands in red and then three bet inducing these hands, three bet folding some of these hands and calling all of this area, the green area. And then we can see the crazy big blind uh, calling folding 27% of hands, V-pipping 73% of hands, three betting mostly value, it's gonna be 70-30 again. And uh, it does have uh, just a piling range, the dark red is piling, the uh, orange is through betting smaller. And yeah, so just heaps of, heaps of V-pipping, let's uh, have them three bet here and the hijack player is trapping with aces, kings, jacks, tens, nines, trapping with ace, queen, only going all in, ace, king, ace, queen, and queens, and calling as wide as queen, nine, king, seven, ace, ten. Okay, so that's enough on pre-flop. Now I have some great post-flop shortcuts for you guys. The biggest one um, that I like is just very simply, C-betting 100% frequency as the three-better. 
when you're in position, you can see bet every single, sorry, you can see bet 100% frequency for a 20% size when you are the three bet aggressor in position. And when you're out of position, you can see bet 100% frequency, 35% sizing um, as a three better. And I would recommend that you guys do that as a baseline. And if you want to get more creative from there, uh, once you start playing higher stakes, then you can do that. But that is the most incredible baseline. It's the same, shows the same EV as uh, GTO. And then it's also incredibly hard to counter. Uh, when someone is facing a very high frequency, small CBET size, A, they have to continue a lot, and B, they have to raise a lot. Uh, they have to raise more thinly for value. Uh, that's a part of the game tree that's much less studied. Uh, you know, they have to raise thinner for value, then they have to know how to play turns and rivers, and this is all out of position versus a range that should have a lot of nutted hands. It's not easy. So, um, as a baseline, just 100% C bet as the three pot, three bet aggressor. When you're in position, you go smaller, you get about 20% pot. And when you're out of position, go larger, 35% pot. I can prove this in node lock. I have some sims here um, to show you and go through the proof on that. All right. So, first tree I have here. We have button versus cutoff, cutoff opens, button three bets, button uh, cutoff calls. The flop is eight, seven, four, and we're just gonna look how to play this on the flop. So the in positions range looks something like this. A lot of strong hands. Out of positions range looks something like this. And by the way, one of the one of the reasons why I'm spending so much time on preflop today is once you understand what ranges your opponent, it, it's good for yourself to understand like what you should be playing, but also understanding what your opponents are doing because most people are getting pretty close to GTO nowadays. But being able to assign your opponent a range going heading to a flop will make you will allow you to have much more accurate decision making post flop. So this is stuff you really need to study and you can't look past. Even if you think your pre-flop ranges are great, um, you know, always be studying so that you can understand your opponents better. And, and generally, I would say, you know, populations probably just don't three bet enough uh, with bluffs. Um, so factor that in, and they also probably don't beat pip enough. I mean, when you play enough poker, you start to understand, like, you know, people aren't beat pipping pocket twos and pocket threes every time you open the hijack. It's just not happening. Queen A suited, it's just not happening. So, uh, you know, assigning your players your opponent's accurate range is very important. So in position range looks like this for the three bet. Cutoff out of position range looks like that. We have an eight, seven, four, four flop. I specifically chose this flop because it's one of the worst flops for in position. This flop should be much better for out of position, but guess what? You can still see better 100% frequency for a small size. Um, this is the GTO solution for what a, one moment. This um, is the GTO solution for what uh, our strategy as the C better should look like, all using all these different sizes, sometimes betting three into 14, sometimes betting six into 14, sometimes betting 11 and 14, very complex strategies, mixing checks. Um, and you can see the EV of the imposition player is 8.12. 8.12 on average, the in-position player is going to collect from this 14 big blind pot. So he's getting you know, a little over half pot share. So the IP player has, on average, is gonna get 8.12 uh, big blinds back. Now I have the node locked sim for what happens if we just bet three, which is 20% pot at 100% frequency, that's why, all these boxes are red, um, EV of IP, 8.06. So it went from 8.12 to 8.06. This is 0.4% pot share that we're losing by just using the simplified strategy of betting 100% frequency for 20% sizing. If you guys want to know how to do no locking yourself, um, 
I can just show you here. Let's just say we bet at calls. Turn this to two of hearts. This guy checks. You just find the note of the tree that you want to that you want to lock. Um, so I'm just going to lock this turn strategy. So turn. This is what the strategy looks like in GTO. If you want to node lock and play around with it, you would just go to set strategy tree, set strategy and lock node. You're in here. And what you're trying to do is change this grid into different colors based on how you think that you are going to play or your opponent is going to play. Uh, and you can do so by messing with these strategies right here. There's one, two, three, four, five, five different options here on the turn. If you want to fix something and lock it, you just click fixed. Um, let's just say uh, we wanted to bet everything. We're just going to fix fix a 100% large size betting. And then you can leave everything else as proportional. But anything that's locked as fix um, will that's that's auto locking a strategy. And then if it's marked proportional, that means that that stri strategy um, adjusts based on your fixed strategies. So all of this, all of these proportional that are somewhat yellow right now, all of those will turn pure gray because we have locked and we have fixed this grid here. Then you click on lock all hands, set strategy and close, and then you just click go, rerun the sim. So this is not only good for testing pure strategies on flops, but it's also good for testing how you think your opponents are going to play. So for instance, I could go in on that flop and I could say, I think my opponent is actually going to fold, you know, 35% instead of 40%. Uh, and I think he's going to float with these hands. You know, maybe he's a maniac. He's only going to fold, let's say he's only going to fold 25%. So I would go in and I would adjust the opponent's strategy facing my bet down to 25, lock it, rerun the sim. And then the next time that I looked at my C betting strategy, it would be different, you know, it would be much less bluff heavy. It would just be more value heavy, uh, you know, and this is what, this is how the top players study, by the way. I talk to top cash game players on ACR right now, you know, what are you doing that's making you the most EV in your games? Oh, I really like to node lock. I just kind of, I play 40, 60 hours a week. I have a feeling how my, how my opponents are playing or I play against nits and then I play against lag tards. Um, so I just go in and I know lock what I think that their strategies are. And then it helps me create better strategies to exploit, uh, exploit what they're doing. So this is running, click stop, check out the new load, check out the new uh, SIM. It'll be hundred percent bet. Uh, and that's how you study this stuff. Or you can just watch videos with me and I'll just tell you the shortcuts. So we're going to go to this next flop. This is hand number two, small blind versus button. So this is button raising, uh, small blind three betting, and then button calling. So the small blind is going to three bet this, 16, 17% of hands. In position player flats with this. Look at all the strength in this flatting range. Queens, kings, aces. All right. 10, 7, 5 flop. Um, this is the GTO strategy. Tons of mixing. We have 18 big blinds in the middle, different bet sizes, 4, 7, 14. There's checks. Uh, you know, very complex decision grid. What's the expected value of out of position player, the small blind guy that we're studying? It's 9.96. Okay. So on average, he's going to make 10, 10 big blinds out of this 18 big blind pot. All right, let's go in and let's node lock the small blind to playing a pure strategy of bet for one third pot. So now he's just going to pure bet six and 18. All right, simple enough. E -E -O -O -P -E -V, so this is the EV of the small blind. It's 9.866 now. So it dropped from 
9.96, it dropped to 9.8866 from this incredibly complex strategy to just pure betting. So 9.96 minus 0.866 divided by 18 chips in the middle. So half of a percent. You're losing half of a percent by playing a more simplified strategy. Um, and I looked at the sim before, and just so you know, this is a really interesting sim. Um, the imposition player is only folding 7% of hands and is raising five. Uh, hands like aces, kings, and queens are played as pure call. Uh, really interesting output. You know, and keep in mind that um, that strategy of 100% C bet for one third was taking into account that this guy's only going to fold seven. So if this folding frequency in real life is 12, then it becomes even better to be using uh, high frequency, small sizing on the flop. All right. So the last hand we're going to go over. Um, we're doing big blind versus big blind three bet versus a button call. Same exact thing. We're just testing our theory with uh, high frequency, small size C bet. Um, big blinds range looks like this. Pretty aggressive. 16% three bet. Eight and eight. It's going to be about 8% value. 8% bluffs here. Uh, and then the imposition flatting range looks like this. A lot of strength. All right, queen 10 2. This is the GTO section. Sorry. Uh, lots of half checking, lots of big betting. Uh, 14 into 18, 7 into 18, 4 into 18. EVOP is 9.7. And then I just locked it 100% C bet, one third pot. EV of out of position is 9.5. 9.7 minus 9.5. By 18. 1% pot share. Uh, nothing. Just by just playing this simple strategy. So just keep in mind, just remember that when you're in position, you go much smaller. You go about 20% pot on every single board. And then out of position, you size up to 35% pot. And you will be printing. Okay, thank you guys for joining. Um, goodbye.